Hey folks, Dino here again. This time taking another look at a bootleg, a Dragon Ball figure arts. <laughs> this one is, yeah, um, it's meant to be the Toyotaro edition of Ultra Instinct Goku. But in typical bootlegger fashion, they have only half done it right. <laughs> um, but yeah, at least this time I got a box. <laughs> uh, but yeah, basically, this one, they are marketing it as the Toyotaro version uh, bootleg. But unfortunately, it's pretty much their original bootleg mold for Ultra Instinct. Uh, even down to, like, the old hair. But, <laughs> um, just with the new windswept uh, secondary hair, which that's a whole other topic unto itself, which we will discuss shortly. But yeah, um, link is the, in the description below if you do want this figure, um, because like, the one saving grace of this bootleg is, well, there's two. One is that it doesn't fall apart, which is always a bonus. <laughs> and two is that they did at least a copy the new windswept hair. Um, me personally, I wasn't a fan of the windswept hair on the official one, so I'm not a fan here. Uh, but at least it is something new with this bootleg. So yeah, um, without further ado, let's get him off the stand and take a look at the box. So yeah, um, as I said before, surprisingly I actually did get a box this time. Um, despite not asking for one, um, although it just enrages me just that little bit more because they've clearly got the Ultra Instinct Toyotaro Edition Goku right there, front and center, um, or front and right, whatever you want to say, <laughs> um, with the new hair, and we don't get it. They really missed a trick there because. I would have been recommending this figure one million percent more than I am now, purely because like there's third party companies coming out with that hairstyle, just the hair on its own with a couple of faces, and they are charging upwards of forty quid for it. <laughs> like I get the Toyotaro edition was a limited edition, folks, but. The, the hair is not that amazing that you'd be willing to pay an entire figure. It's worth of like your bank balance just to get it. Um, but yeah, at least we get that one. <laughs> but yeah, a standard bootleg packaging. It's a straight copy. They have just whited out all of the actual legalese. Surprisingly, Minus the Dragon Ball Super logo. I would say that's a pretty big legally that you've um, missed out there. Bootleg company. <laughs> uh, Son Goku Toyotaro edition. Even though the side of the box doesn't actually have that writing on it. They have kept it in at the side. Again, on the back of the box. Um, just literally a copy and paste of the official one. Um... Very annoying. Very annoying indeed. <laughs> um, but yeah, the one thing I do notice, I am going to have to check the Toyotaro Edition box, but they are showing Ultra Instinct Goku with Kamehameha, which didn't come with Toyotaro Edition. Um, they gave us that hairpiece instead. And actually, yeah, looking at it, yeah, they have just added that in. <laughs> that's, um, that's the original Ultra Instinct Goku. They have just, yeah, I, I see what's going on here. They've actually modified that box art to make it seem like this was supposed to be included, which it was included with the bootleg. But it doesn't come with the Toyotaro edition, like the official one. Um, but yeah, we'll go over that a bit more later. 
but yeah, a um, bit more interesting of a box than I thought it would be. So yeah, let's take a look at his accessories now. So in terms of accessories, in the box, um, he comes packaged with the standard original Ultra Instinct Goku here. Um, although it's done in a rather nice like metallic silver finish, um, which is actually like a shinier finish than even the official uh, Ultra Instinct Goku, Toyotaro Edition Goku, or even the Black Hole Toys version. Like, so yeah, I suppose that's a, a bit of a bonus. Um, it's a bit soft in terms of the details, because obviously it's been remoulded god knows how many times at this point, but it's still decent to have. Like, I'll give them a little bit of props, at least for the paint. Um, obviously, he comes with the windswept hair. I'll get back to that in a moment. Um, he also comes with this head, or this face, sorry, which is pretty much specifically for this uh, windswept hair. Uh, you will notice that is actually moulded from the Toyotaro edition. So, I mean, that proves, apart from the windswept hair, obviously, but that proves they had access to the mould. Like, they obviously had the figure on hand. Why? Why did they not just go the extra mile and give us it all? I don't get it. Um, but yeah, the rest of the faces are pretty much just the original faces. I mean, don't get me wrong, the printing for the eyes is actually pretty decent. Um, the only thing that lets these faces down is the lack of like sharpness in the sculpt, and um, plus the the mouth is a uh, quite badly done on this one. I seem to remember the original bootleg version having this same problem, where it almost looks like he's smiling with the stern face. Um, we do get this one, which is not part of the original. He, they're sort of looking off to the side, which, again, the eyes are decent enough. They kind of look a bit wonky, now that I'm looking at it. I suppose if he's side on, you're not really going to notice, but yeah, face on, the eyes are in different places. <laughs> um, he has teeth gritted face, which is pretty decently done. And finally, he has Yelling Face, which, yeah, um, decently enough painted. I will give them that. Uh, all of the faces, like, can't really fault it, apart from the fact they all look sweaty, because they're using, like, cheap materials, obviously. <laughs> um, in terms of hands, it comes with a pair of fists, a pair of key blast hands, pair of Kamehameha hands, which unfortunately the bootleg company strikes again. They could have just given us the bootleg 3.0 Namek Goku hands with the peg, seeing as how they gave us a 3.0 Kamehameha. Um, but no, these are the 2.0, they do not have pegs. Very sad. <laughs> and finally, pair of martial arts posey hands. So, standard array of 2.0 Goku accessories. Um, but, yeah. Taking a look at the figure itself now. Um, I mean, it, at first glance, it, it's just a, the exact same bootleg body that we've seen before, let's be honest. In fact, his um, crotch is on back to front. Give me two seconds. Okay, so one quick swapsies later, and the legs are fixed. Um, they're using the sort of go-to bootleg 2.0 hips, where they're not exactly like the 2.0 hips that you're used to. Um, they have a sort of drop-down, which I'll go over a bit more in articulation. 
Um, but yeah, it's pretty much the same bootleg mould that we are used to. Um, however, they have done a little bit of tweaking to it. For one, the body is a lot better. I remember not even being able to use the ab section on the original. This one does actually move, which is better. And at the bottom, they have actually copied the proper Toyotaro um, manga colours. Um, just bring this guy in for a quick comparison. And you will see, yeah, the colours are pretty much identical. Maybe a little bit different, but not enough to complain about. Um, it is completely missing the shading on the torso. Although they did give it a little bit of shading on... The legs so there's that at least <laughs> um but yeah the the figure itself just suffers from the old bootleg mold that ultra instinct is known for the shoulders are tiny in comparison to what they should be which makes them look hunched over and um, i believe that's because these are technically uh, the shoulders that they use to put the caps on and um, the sort of shoulder caps for Goku's gi so yeah it looks a bit smaller however for some reason it does still have catch scratches on it so whoever's done it has actually gone through the the trouble of moulding those catch scratches on which I think is a bit bizarre <laughs> uh, but yeah the rest of it is just the same old mould. Um, in terms of the head, before we go on to articulation, this head infuriates me more and more the more I think about it. Um, if we pop it off the neck peg, it is the same base sculpt as the Toyotaro edition, which means it goes really far into the neck and makes him look as if he has no neck when you're using it. But you'll also notice it's been remolded to actually accept the standard faces. Like, you can tell the, the faces are not meant to go in there because of how like long the hair is overall. But yeah, that means that this face that they have deliberately sculpted or remolded sorry from the Toyotaro edition they have re-sculpted it to fit with the rest of these faces um which means this one if i quickly bring it over it should fit in the standard sort of face or head yeah it, it does um there's a bit of a a bit of a sort of forehead sticking out but it does fit that is bizarre um i did not expect them to do that i just expected like this hair would only work with this face the rest of them you were sort of stuck but no um that is weird um i have an official face here i brought it just in case so if we pop that off and take a look, yeah, you can see the the peg system is totally different. Um, in fact, the official one is much deeper, which was actually one of the issues I had with the Toyotaro edition. Um, but yeah, you can see they've completely remolded it at the top. That is weird. Does this fit in this face? I would assume not. No, the pegs don't even line up. What? <laughs> like that that's honestly even more annoying now that I've noticed that. Um so they were willing to re-sculpt one face and one hair. But not just give us copies of the whole thing? Like why? I will to, to the end of time, I will never understand bootleggers. I I really won't. Like, their decision-making just baffles me. Like, 
you have the makings of a pretty decent bootleg here, but you have to half-ass it. Like, wh <laughs> whatever bootlegger came up with the 3.0 Namek Goku, keep him around, bootleggers, please. Stop giving us half-assed crap like this. Honestly. <laughs> yeah, um, quickly going over articulation. And because this head is not meant for this body, like, you do not get any movement at all, apart from side to side on this one. Um, I would pop the other one on, but I popped it off already and thought I was going to break the peg. So, yeah. Um, the neck, as you can see, does have a lot of movement. Probably too much, to be honest. The arms can go up that far. They can swivel. Does have a butterfly joint, which uh, doesn't really do much, but that's just par for the course with these 2.0s. Um, bicep swivel. Double joint at the elbow, which is decent range for what it is. That was popping off. Lovely. Just pop that back in. Uh, the wrists are on a hinge and swivel, a ball hinge sort of thing, but the hands are almost, like, are these the right pegs? I, I don't think they are, because the hands are not fitting very well. They're sitting there, but they're quite loose. Um, in terms of the abs, can we go that far? When you mix it in with the waist, it can go that far forward, but not a whole lot else. Um, I think it's meant to be one of those hinge and swivel systems, but they've clearly just got a, a barbell joint in there. Swivel and movement at the waist. Now that we've got the hips round the right way, it is a bit mismolded, as you can see. That that should be closer to the middle. <laughs> um, but we do get range upwards. Whole lot back. Thigh rotation. Legs can get out that far, which I think is better than official 2.0s. <laughs> Even though these um, hip joints are a bit fiddly, they do work decently well. Um, they do have a bit of a drop down, which can allow you to kick up a lot further. Double joint at the knee. And the old school Goku foot. So you've got rotation, toe articulation, and a little bit of pivot, but not a whole lot. So yeah, then just one last thing before we go. And I tell me my thoughts. That is the bootleg compared to the official. Um, surprisingly, the bootleg is a bit taller. I think it's got to do with these hips, honestly. Um, because the rest of it is a bit shrunken looking. But yeah, um, overall guys, I would probably say, unless you really, really want that windswept hair, but you don't want to buy the official one. I would probably steer clear of it, to be honest. It's a decent enough figure. If you put it in a pose, you're not going to notice the the weird weirdness of the joints, like the shoulders and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it, it's decent for custom fodder, but it's not a replacement for the actual figure. You're better off going for Black Hole Toys if you can't afford the Toyotaro edition. So yeah, guys, um, that'll do it for this review. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. As I said before, link in the description if you do want to buy this figure um, off AliExpress. But until next time, I'll see y'all later.